This is Dwayne Beisner, sales manager and sales representative for ERA Real Estate. It's a great day to be in real estate for the quote of the day. If I had my life to live over again, I would have made a rule to read some poetry and listen to some music at least once a week by Charles Darwin. And for the joke of the day, one day Mikey was sitting in his apartment when the doorbell unexpectedly rang. He answered the door and found a salesman standing on his porch with a strange object. What is that? Mikey asked. It's a thermos, the salesman replied. What does it do, asked Mikey. This baby, the salesman says, keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. After some deliberation, Mikey bought one, deciding it would really help his lunch situation. Next day, he arrived at the plant where he works, and sure enough, all the employees there were curious about this new object. What is it, they asked. It's a thermos, Mikey said. I guess they didn't have thermoses back in the, uh, the East Coast and the um, plants there. But anyway, uh, what does it do, they, they asked. Well, Mikey says in a bragging manner, it keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. Well, what you got in it? To which Mikey replies, three cups of coffee and a popsicle. So, for the business tip of the day, anytime you acknowledge someone that is smarter than you are, then you're perceived as, as the smarter one. Think about that. And for the uh, Darwin Award of the day, this was a personal account that was posted on the site. Quote, unquote, Bub and I are great fans of zombie movies and have passed many a late night in front of the TV with popcorn and DVDs. Ever since reading the Zombie Survival Guide by Max Brooks, Bub is convinced that hordes of the undead will one day rise up. While trying to convince me of the impending apocalypse, Bub cited two facts that I found to be in error. Number one, the human skull is one of the hardest services in nature. Number two, a medieval, uh, medieval mace lacks the stopping power to crush a human skull. We argued these points for half an hour without coming to an agreement. Next morning, Bub test, texted me to come over and settle the issue. He answered the door wearing his hel uh, cycle helmet and led me to his backyard where he handed me a lump hammer, which is a small sledgehammer, and told me to hit him over the head. I don't know if the helmet would have stopped the hammer blow or not, but I wasn't about to try it on my friend. Instead, I devised, devised a simple experiment, hoping to avoid, avoid any uh, nasty injuries. So, Bub and I went to the supermarket to buy two coconuts, one for the experiment and one just because I like coconut. We returned to Bub's house and proceeded to place a coconut on the paving in his backyard. I picked up the lump hammer and with one solid blow, reduced the coconut to delicious shrapnel. As I was clearing up the shards of nutty goodness, I said, if that was your head, you'd be dead. I turned to see Bub trying to validate my theory by headbutting the second coconut as hard as he could. Bub was fine after a few stitches. Thankfully, not a Darwin Award winner this time, but we'll keep you posted. Acts, uh, incidentally, Bub was uh, vindicated. He did manage to crack the, the coconut. He proved that his skull is indeed harder than a coconut. So... My experiment was inconclusive. Now for the social commentary. Sacramento, California, as the Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger, was the technology of the future. Feared by humans as governor, he's being foiled by the technology of the past. For the second time in two years, Schwarzenegger has ordered most state workers pay cut to the federal minimum wage because lawmakers missed their deadline to fix the state's 19 b -b 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 billion budget deficit. Uh, the legislature's failure to act has left the state with a, without a spending plan as a new fiscal year begins. A state appellate court ruled in Schwarzenegger's favor Friday, but the state controller who issues the state paychecks said he can't comply. One reason given by controller John Chang, a Democrat elected in 2006, um, is that the state's computer system can't handle the technological challenge of restating paychecks to the federal minimum of $7.25 an hour. Is that incredible or what? My personal computer sitting right here could do that. And it's not, you know, a multi-million dollar system that the government has. Unbelievable. So anyway, Chang cited Friday's ruling by the 3rd District Court of Appeals, which said unfeasible, unfeasibility would excuse him from complying with Schwarzenegger's minimum wage order. He said a fix to the state's computerized payroll system won't be ready until October 2012. That's, what, a year and three months from now to fix a computer so it can give minimum wage to employees? Give me a break. Meanwhile, more than 200,000 uh, state workers remain in limbo about the size of their July paychecks, while Chang asked the court for guidance on how to proceed. If wages are indeed cut to $7.25 an hour, employees will be reimbursed once a budget is signed. So, get this. 
if they were reduced to seven dollars and twenty five cents an hour, once the budget is signed and passed, we'd be making up all the back monies to them anyway, which makes absolutely no sense. So anyway, quote unquote, the state isn't saving any money on paying them minimum wage because they ultimately will have to make them whole. Harrigan said. So what's the point? Exactly, Governor. What's the point? Exactly, John Chang. What is the point? You and the legislature keep putting band-aids on a bleeding artery when what's needed is triage. Good job. Uh, the average state employee, by the way, takes home $65,000 annually, which is probably far too much, uh, more than they deserve. According to the State Department of uh, Personnel Administration, the cut to minimum wage would mean state workers would make the equivalent of $15,000 a year. Ouch! That's 25% of what they'd normally be making. Anyway, for the real estate news, something a little bit more practical, what causes borrowers to walk away? Well, borrowers with super prime credit scores accounted for just 5% of the mortgage delinquencies. About 28% of their defaults were calculated uh, as being strategic. This relatively small actual number is nevertheless causing the credit industry to look at new ways to evaluate walk away risk, even among the very credit worthy. Credit Bureau Esperian reports that borrowers in California, yay, Florida, and other hard-hit states are more likely to walk away than people living in states with more stable markets. Wow, that took a real scientist to figure that out. Also, residents of states where lenders have no recourse are more likely to toss in the towel. Duh. Okay, people with small amounts of negative equity are also more likely to stay and pay. Hmm. Okay. So office vacancies also have risen. Office vacancies rates nationwide continue to climb in the second quarter of this year, reaching 17.4%, according to research firm Rees Incorporated. This is the highest vacancy rate since 1993. Since 1993. Holy moly, that's 17 years. Hardest hit markets include Las Vegas, Phoenix, and Detroit. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Finally, Los Angeles is not on the list. Washington, D.C. and New York City appear to be stabilizing because of increasing employment by both the U.S. government and the financial services industry. Of course, the U.S. government would be increasing employment when we're broke and have no money. But it seems unlikely that either of those industries can, dri can drive a full recovery. I know, but they're trying. Uh, the fate of office properties will depend largely on how well the U.S. economy and labor markets fare amid what appears to be a recovery that comes in fits and starts, says Ray's economist Ryan Servino. That, that says it about right, I think. Anyway, I need to say, like I always do, right now, today, is the best buyer's market you and I will ever see when you combine prices and interest rates. If you or anybody you know is looking to buy or sell anywhere in the world, give us a call at ERA. We have global reach. Also, if you're thinking about making a move into real estate, give me a call or shoot me an email. I'd love to talk turkey with you. This is Dwayne signing off. Happy trails to you as always. Proud to be an American.